Farm Tools channel. This is my double your DSL speed experiment. The internet service I have is the AT&T DSL Extreme 3.0 and I would like to at least get the claim 3 megabytes per second. Now, I contacted AT&T and they denied any upgrades to my DSL and they say they are maxed out on bandwidth. So I did a Google search for increasing DSL speed and found some good YouTube videos demonstrating how to double your speed. So working with what I have, can I actually increase or even double my DSL speed? I understand there is no claim that the results are guaranteed to double your speed, but I have nothing to lose thanks to the AT&T no customer service. I'll start with a speed test and I'm going to use speakeasy.com to see how many megabytes per second I actually have. To begin the test, you choose a location from the west coast to the east coast. I'll click on Atlanta. It's the closest to me. I'm going to fast forward through this test to keep this video short because it takes four to six hours to upload a five minute video with AT&T DSL Extreme 3.0. Here are the results. 2.84 megabits download and 0.35 megabits upload from my AT&T DSL Extreme 3.0. According to several videos I watched, two items are needed to increase your DSL speed. A pot splitter and Cat5 cable. The pot splitter is an electronic circuit that separates or splits the voice and data on your telephone line. This will also eliminate all DSL filters going to each phone or device currently used. So by using the pot splitter, the voice and data signals are separated at the incoming line to your house instead of each individual device connected to a filter. I know many no longer use a wired house phone and use their cell phones instead, but I do have a house phone connected. One video recommended a DSL outdoor pot splitter by Subtle. The one I purchased was a model number 649A1 and it cost $36 at Amazon. My old phone wire was a standard four wire cable and it will be upgraded to Cat5 Ethernet cable as the video recommended. This is a four pair twisted Cat5 E cable. Even though with a single phone line and DSL connection, you would just use two pairs. I purchased 500 feet of a good quality Cat 5E cable, $30 from Amazon. There are several ways you could wire this, but I'll show you the way I did it because the jacks for the DSL modem and the single phone base station are not in the same location. This is the telephone network interface, and it's from AT&T, and this is your incoming telephone line. This is the pot splitter. I have two jacks, one for the phone and one for the DSL modem. Here's my outdoor AT&T telephone network interface. The black cable is coming in from AT&T and I am 6,180 feet away from the switches station. Okay, you want to know, how do I know I'm 6,180 feet away from the switches station? Well, the reason is because AT&T came through the neighborhood not long ago and they were checking cables and they were measuring distances. So that's how I know the distance here. The connection that needs to be made will be to the tip and ring wires. These are the green and red wires for a single line and if you have two lines you'll probably use the yellow and black also. You can google tip and ring if you want more information on that. There's plenty out there. Now I can mount the pot splitter somewhere here on the outside but in my case I chose to install it inside of the basement wall directly behind the outdoor telephone network interface. This way I don't have to drill through the brick to run new Cat5 cables. Now I've already pulled the new Cat5 cables from my phone jacks to the pot splitter. Now I color coded each one to identify where it goes. I drilled a hole through the back of the box to bring the cables in instead of using the grommet entrance at the bottom. I'll mount the box making sure it is level. I've seen plenty of electrical work where the electricians had no clue as to what a level was used for. The work looks just plain sloppy. With the box mounted, I'll terminate the wires. My AT&T TNI has two cables going to the old inside wiring. One I'll disconnect because it is no longer needed. These tip and ring wires go through the wall to the pot splitter line terminals. This is the tip and ring connection from the TNI. This is the voice terminals that goes to your phone. This connection is for data, otherwise your DSL modem. Okay, with all connections made and DSL filters removed, let's see what the results are. 
Now let's go back to Speakeasy and see if my DSL speed has increased. I'll choose the same server, Atlanta, Georgia. I'll fast forward again to save time. Here are the results. 2.84 megabits per second download and 0.31 megabits per second upload. Here's the results before the pot splitter and the new Cat5 cable. 2.84 megabits download and 0.35 megabits upload. A difference of nothing. Not a zip. No difference other than a slower upload speed. Okay, here's the conclusion of my double your DSL speed experiment. My house wiring and filters had nothing to do with slow DSL speed. If AT&T says 3 megabits per second max, count on it. It will never be more than 3. Our neighborhood is a little over 10 years old and AT&T is using outdated infrastructure for phone and data service. AT&T denied any upgrades to my DSL and it would be nice if they would stop sending the offers to upgrade my service to UVerse, you know, the, the speed you need and the price you'll love. AT&T actually told me UVerse was not going to happen in my neighborhood. The best option for me to have a faster DSL speed? Move to another zip code. So a faster DSL speed from AT&T is not going to happen. Now if you install a pot splitter in a new Cat5 cable and it increases your DSL speed, I'm happy for you. Here's the life's lesson from my double your DSL speed experiment. Be happy with what you have. <laughs> I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching Carve Tool Settle and have a great day.